Hello YouTube, today we're with episode 14 of my career mode playthrough in Kerbal Space Program. As I record this, I'm nearly at 500 subscribers. As I put this out, I'll probably just about be there. Maybe you've even passed it, I don't know. So thanks for that guys, um, you know, that's pretty awesome. And anyway, I'd like to show you how I'm going to spend our uh, science points that we got from that mission to EVE. So obviously we didn't get that many because it wasn't a return mission, so we couldn't return any samples. So we didn't get the full amount of data from everything, or the full amount of science. But uh, what we are going to do is unlock our high altitude flight part. We could unlock this as well, which would be useful, but uh, a lot of you have been suggesting that I make a plane. But uh, I don't make planes. I make SSTOs, so let's go. We're going to use that, and um, there, we're just going to head into the space plane hangar, and from here, I'm just going to build a um, an SSTO, and then uh, after I've finished, I'll show it to you. So here we are on the runway with our SSTO. It has Jebediah inside, and um, well, it's looking pretty good. I reckon we'll be able to make it quite easily into Kerb in orbit. We might even be able to make it a little bit further. I don't know, I'm thinking about trying a free return trajectory to the moon. Uh, but we'll see how much fuel we have and that kind of thing afterwards. So without any further ado, I'm going to take the brakes off and actually throttle up. Hit T, and then we're just going to activate this engine manually. We don't really need any action groups for this uh, for this rocket or this you know SSTO space plane thing. Um, we can just do it all by clicking because that uh, jet engine is in the center so we're just going to wait for it to run out, we don't have to cut off any engines or anything. And uh, this thing can take off pretty quickly but it's not so stable on the runway so I'm going to try taking off before we, you know, go unstable on the runway. Um, now I just need to pitch up and uh, probably go to maybe 10-15 kilometers up before I start to put my nose down a little bit and try and build up a bit more horizontal speed. Uh, so I'm just going to try and build up my vertical speed now, because there's no point wasting fuel uh, pushing through the thicker part of the atmosphere. We may as well just burn straight up um, and try and you know get through it as quickly as we can and as fuel efficiently as we can. Anyway, um, things are looking pretty good. Jebediah is looking happy, and uh, I think this should be quite a nice mission. And uh, I'm sorry for sort of neglecting your requests. Um, I know there's a few of you been requesting for space plane or plane videos and that's just because I didn't have all the parts I'd want to have before I can make a space plane or an SSTO because I don't really like building spa uh, normal planes, they're a bit boring and the flight times are too long and you know they're just not fun whereas SSTOs are a bit more of a challenge, they're a bit more interesting to make and uh, they're definitely a lot more interesting to watch I mean me flying over curb in terrain and just taking surface samples and EVA reports is not really that interesting I don't think so I thought I may as well just try and build an SSTO and to do that I obviously need to wait till I had the turbojet engines and um, these intakes and things and all the wings of course that I wanted and yet we're hitting that sort of mark now so I'm going to go down to maybe 30 degrees for now uh, we're quite low on intake air so I'm going to pitch down a little bit more than that uh, 15 degrees sounds okay and we just want to keep up this, this attitude and keep building up that speed because you can see it's going up pretty quickly at the moment um, although we don't have very much intake air so we want to build up as much speed as we can get you know retain as much intake air as we can and you see we're actually getting more intake air at the rate now because we're not really much higher up um, you know we're not pointing upwards too much so we're pr actually pretty much gaining intake air which is pretty good uh, but as soon as that gets down to maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.08 or something, something around that intake air, then we'll have to activate these rocket engines um, to make sure that we don't do anything too stupid. And you can see now our you know, velocity is pretty much horizontal rather than vertical at all. But we're nearly at 20 kilometers up and we're nearly at 1000 meters a second, which is sort of what I'm aiming for. I'll see how far I can take it after that, but uh, I'm sort of aiming for that kind of speed and that kind of altitude because I don't want to uh, cut the or switch the engines too fast and I don't have to because I can just wait for this to burn out because it's in the center it's not going to make the sh uh, the SSTO flip out and um, yeah getting there now we're past both of the objectives that I'd like to get to but we can still probably hold it for a little bit longer if I pitch down a little bit more 
We're also getting out of the thicker part of the atmosphere, which means we can go even faster. And uh, yeah, I think I'm going to activate those other engines now. Because that might mean that we get a little bit more of that out of this engine as well. Although its thrust isn't actually very high at the moment. But its specific impulse is still quite good. So we may as well keep using it till it burns out. And we're just going to keep on burning maybe 20 degrees. Sounds good. Uh, although once this engine runs out, this jet engine runs out of air, then we're probably going to have to point upwards a little bit more. And I reckon that'll happen just about now. Uh, yeah. There we go, it's run out. So we're going to shut down that engine so we don't waste any fuel burning when we you know, can't actually burn. And uh, pitch up a little bit. I think I'm going to go to 30 degrees now. And uh, that should be good. And you can see our orbits, because obviously because we've got a lot of horizontal velocity, our orbit is um, a horizontal speed. Our orbit's quite flat, which means that our circularization burn should be fairly, you know, delta V minimal. And I'm actually going to pitch up all the way to 45 degrees now, until uh, the apoapsis gets up. We want it to get up to maybe, I don't know, 75, 80 kilometers. There's no point going any higher than that, it's just wasting fuel. So, yep, 75 is there, that looks pretty good. Now we just need to schedule a circularization burn. I'm going to time warp a little bit. Um, there we go. Yep, that's absolutely fine, I'll just burn a little bit more to bring it back up to 75 for OCD reasons, and now I'm going to schedule that circularization burn. And let's just adjust it a little bit. And there we go, 74 and 75, that's looking pretty good. And it says that burn's going to take us 30 seconds. That's not too long, so that's 15 seconds before and 15 seconds after the node. Um, but we still have to get out of the atmosphere, because we're not out of the atmosphere yet. Unfortunately, and that's us out of the atmosphere now. And I'll just wait till we get about 15 seconds away from that node, because that's the kind of point that we'll be looking at burning. Here we go, that's us getting there now, and start burning. So hopefully we'll be able to make this, um, you know, we'll make it into orbit fairly easily. You can see we've got uh, pretty good amounts of liquid fuel and oxidizer. We've got more liquid fuel than we do have oxidizer, so we'll have a little bit of extra fuel uh, later on in the mission. If you know, when we try and get back to Kerbin, we can probably fly a little bit on the turbojet when we get a bit lower down in the atmosphere. Um, and we're just making that burn now. You can see it's not really taking much to do. And just want to make sure. There we go. So that's looking good. And now uh, I think, well, we can see uh, 74 and 75 apoapsis and periapsis, uh, non respectively. And now I think we can have a go at making a burn towards the moon. So we're going to try and get a free return trajectory so we don't have to make any burns after this. And we'll see what we can do. Anyway, a free return trajectory should look something like... Mm, that doesn't want to do it. I think we haven't quite burned enough. There we go. That's a free return trajectory there. And it's not quite a free return trajectory. We need to burn a little bit more prograde. And uh, we want to balance out the amount we move this round with where our periapsis against Kerbin ends up being in the end. And there we go, that's looking pretty good, so I'm going to make that burn. It says it's going to take two minutes, and I'm just going to burn straight away. Because uh, I don't think it will take two minutes. I think that's a little rubbish. And there we go. You can see the estimated burn times come down to 40 seconds. And we're about 20 seconds away from the node. So we'll be okay. Uh, I think we'll make this. And yeah, we've still got a reasonable amount of liquid fuel and oxidizer. It is the oxidizer that's going to run short first. So we need to be a bit more careful of that than the liquid fuel. Uh, but we should be okay. And I think we'll probably be able to make this burn. It doesn't matter if we don't have any oxidizer left after this, because, of course, you know, we don't need oxidizers to run those jet engines, and as long as we can get the proper free return trajectory, then we'll be absolutely fine. Although we are running out of oxidizer, it's going to be a bit closer than I'd like, but uh, I think we'll make it. I 
There we go, and let's have a look and see how that free return trajectory actually looks. So I think we're going to need to burn a little bit more prograde just to bring this periapsis on Kerbin down. And well, that's actually a really nice periapsis around the moon as well. So I'm going to go ahead and quick save there in case time warping screws something up. And then we can go ahead and time warp and get into the moon's sphere of influence. So as I've said, and um, you know, I've said a few times now in other sort of videos, you want to cross this border here of this sort of encounter window thing as um, slow as you can, preferably at one time speed, but if not, then at five times or ten times speed, because that's otherwise um, the physics engine can glitch out a little bit, and you know it's not worth taking that risk. So if you can cross it that slow, then you'll probably get pretty much exactly the same periapsis as you were promised by the game earlier on. Anyway, now uh, we're in the moon's sphere of influence, and uh, I'm going to actually get out and do an EVA report. Well, I'll do a crew report here, so that's 15 scientific value. And then uh, let's get Jeb out of his capsule and see what he has to say about the situation from outside. There we go, 24 science. So let's get back in again. And uh, now I'm just going to time warp until we get a little bit closer. So. Yep, there we are. We're still going down, so I'm going to wait till we're sort of at our periapsis before I start to make more observations. There we go. Pretty much there. And uh, let's see what Jeb has to say now. So that's uh, 4.8 scientific value. Let's get back in again. Can we do another crew report? Oh no, that'll overwrite that one. So we're okay. And we'll time warp a little bit more and then take another one because this looks like an interesting crater to do a crew report above. So let's do that then. Um, where, you, where are we? Here we go. 24 science. Get back in again. And we may be able to get another one. Let's try another one here. Get some more science. EVA. EVA report. Yep, there we go. That's actually, I think, a full science value. So, uh, okay. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll just done the experiments. Okay, so that's probably one that we couldn't actually take as well, because we'd already got it. But that doesn't matter. Yeah, so now, all I'm going to do is time warp until we get back out of the moon's sphere of influence. And again, I want to cross over this, um, this border, essentially, as slowly as I can. And we're coming in. And... There we are. So, 8 kilometer per periapsis, which is really good. Um, I don't think I could have hoped for anything better than that. And now I'm actually going to um, activate our, our uh, center engine and shut down our outer engines, because we don't want to use those really. Um, and there we are. Now all we have to do is time warp until we get back to Kerbin. So this has actually been quite... So this has actually been quite an interesting mission. Um, we've managed to make it all the way to the moon's sphere of influence with an SSTO, and all the way back by the looks of it, as long as we can make this landing reasonably well. And now we're starting to get back into um, Kerbin's sort of atmosphere. And we need to be a bit careful about this because the plane is probably prone to flipping out. Um, yep, we've used up all that. So yep. Everything's looking okay, so I'm just going to time warp a little bit faster now until we get uh, over these mountains here. And yep, we're getting back into the proper part of the atmosphere. I've got SAS on because I'd like to keep pointing prograde. I don't want to do anything stupid. I'd, I'd like it if we didn't flip out. Although we may still end up flipping out. And we're going pretty fast too, uh, but we're slowing down quite quickly as well. We're decelerating quite quickly. And I think that's us. We're Yep, 13 kilometers up. I think we can start to activate this engine. Do we have enough? Yep, we've got enough intake air. So that's all good. And uh, now, I guess, we just have to come down and land. And I think that looks like quite an interesting lake over there. So we'll come and land somewhere close to that. So we're coming in for our final approach now to land um, somewhere near this water. Maybe a bit short of it, but that's not really a big deal. 
I just want to get home safe and uh, celebrate Jeb's pretty awesome mission. Uh, so now, all I'm waiting for is uh, the ground to get a little bit closer to us. And uh, yeah, everything looks pretty good. Uh, you will notice <laughs> Tailfin, I don't even know why, I think Kerbal Space Program just uh, decided it didn't like us. Um, it took off our tail fin, so our somewhat, you know, our perfect flight has been sort of ruined by that. Uh, but it was because I was in time warp, like physical time warp, to get here a little bit quicker. And it just decided to randomly explode, so. Oh well. I can't complain, this mission's gone really, really smoothly. And as long as this landing goes okay, then um, I think we can call this a pretty good success. So, we just want to glide down, and you can see there's quite a nice flat-ish area of land up ahead of us. We just want to glide down and come down on that as slowly as we can. Uh, obviously, we could come down at this speed, it'd be absolutely fine as long as our vertical speed you know, is only a few meters a second. Then we're usually pretty good. Uh, but if we have to come down um, a bit faster than usual, then that's okay too. It's unfortunate that they haven't got a nice EVA or IVA view for this cockpit yet, uh, but I'm pretty sure that's going to come soon anyway. So I'm looking forward to that. And now we just have to pitch up, and I'm just going to give it a little bit of throttle to make sure nothing blows up. And there we go. Cut the engines, turn off SAS, and just touch down. Come on. There we are. Don't break, don't break, don't break, don't break. Oh no, 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 no. You don't want to do this. Oh god, this isn't good. It doesn't feel too stable on wheels for some reason. Um, but there we are, I think we've made it. Yep, there we are, we've stopped and uh, we've finished our mission. We've made it all the way with an SSTO, all the way past the moon and back again. And uh, I'm pretty sure we'll have got a little bit of science on the way, but I hope that's filled your um, needs of space planes and SSTOs and planes in general. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for this video guys. So thanks for watching. If you liked it, then give it a thumbs up and a favorite. If you have any suggestions or questions, then leave a comment down below. As I said, thanks for watching and as always, have a nice day.